wait for a couple of minutes. Hey everyone, so we'll be starting the stream soon and uh, let's wait for a couple of minutes for other folks to join in so that they can also like have an interaction uh, with the speaker. And we are really excited uh, to have all of you here uh, with us. So I guess we'll be starting in two minutes or so. Let's wait for everyone to join in so that uh, no one of you like misses such an insightful session, I would say, because like uh, we have uh, such sessions very rarely. So I guess this is a very special session. So I'll be starting soon. So I guess I should start now uh, without any further delay. So good afternoon to all the participants and hope you all are working and implementing the features to your projects and enjoying the hack. We really are looking forward to your awesome projects and we are really amazed to see your ideas in review too. So moving on to our sessions, we have a session planned that will be guiding you on how to start a startup. And I'm definitely sure that at some point of time in our life, we have come to a point where we dreamt of starting a startup and setting up our own company. So for guiding you on how to make your dream come true, we have Sahil Bansal with us today, who will be our speaker for the session. So without making you further wait, let me introduce you to Sahil Bansal for those of you who don't know him. So Sahil is the co-founder of Fitello. Sahil has over a decade's experience working with tech giants such as Infosys, Genpact and HCL. Most of his work has been around the intersection of technology and human behavior. Fitello is his second startup stint. In his corporate experience, Sahil has created models to shape user behavior by leveraging technology in his fat to fit journey. He learned that fitness is about habit building. Sahil believes that destructive technologies such as AI can uh, make healthcare accessible, effective and affordable. All the details regarding his own startup and how he accomplished all his goals in his long journey will be told by he himself. But let me uh, just give you a small intro about his company. So Fitello is basically an app for weight loss, diet planning and a better uh, overall well-being. This app is dedicated to giving you the very best of health and lifestyle from the comfort of your home or office. So that's a really wonderful service I'd say. So not taking much of your time, let's welcome him. And I really encourage you all to keep up the enthusiasm in the chats. And I really feel uh, and I really feel that uh, you all must ask questions and make the session as interactive as possible. So uh, first of all, hello, Sal, sir. So good evening, first of all. And we will welcome you to guide all of us on how to start a startup. And I would request you to take the session uh, ahead from here. Thank you so much, Ishan. Thanks, Anmol. Hi, everyone. It's it's always a pleasure to speak to the young minds. I believe you are the guys who are trying to change the future. There are, uh, I have had a decades journey, maybe more, trying to do things uh, post-graduation. And uh, over this last 10 years, I've learned so much. I've seen so much. I believe uh, if I were to tell or give advice to my 20-year-old self, uh, there are so many things that I would tell that would make uh, my journey easier. So it is really a privilege to connect with everyone and try to share uh, my experiences, my journey for the last 10 to 12 years. I will quickly share my screen. And uh, what I would also request is for you, if you have questions uh, during the session, or uh, I'll try to keep it short, maybe 20, 25 minutes. And then in case you have questions, you can just quickly uh, ask it in the chat and then we will go through it at the end. So this is my journey. Uh, this is how uh, in this session I want to share how we built Fitello. Fitello is the easiest way to get fit. We are a fitness brand. We are into weight loss. We do disease management as well. But uh, uh, it's a, although it's a 2.5 year old startup, I will say, uh, we are two co-founders here uh, and it is our 10 to 12 years of experience and pain that has gone in uh, in the, these 2.5 years to build it. So I started my journey in 2006 when I attempted to sell fitness supplements. I have been an obese person for most of my life and as such uh, fitness has come naturally to me uh, and that has helped me as well because I have been the, on the consumer side as well. So I understand the pain uh, uh, an obese person goes through. 
and that pain is not like physical pain but the mental pain the the trauma the the shame of going out in public and being with friends uh, or uh, running away from cameras or standing at back in pictures so all of all of that has happened to me and i i've struggled for long to uh, find a permanent solution uh, mac who's the other co-founder at fidelo we has had the similar journey uh, we uh, after i will say struggling for 10 years we found a solution to this and that's where fidelo started in 2019 but before that after i graduated in 2008 i joined in infosys mysore uh, initial part of the mainframe team then risk assessment team uh, then i thought uh, this is not what i want to do although i had a tech background but technology did not come naturally to me and i realized that uh, psychology is what came naturally to me human behavior is what came naturally to me so i went on to pursue a masters in business administration with marketing in mind uh, but fate had it uh, i could not run from technology uh, i was got i got selected in hcl part of the tech team but implementing solutions or products that were driven about behavior change and that is what excited me a lot Uh, that happened uh, same at Genpak, and since these, uh, I was working in an area that I love the most. Uh, and at my stint in Genpak, in in less than five years, I had like five promotions. So that is how much I love my work. Two thousand eighteen, I thought it's time to go for another uh, startup where uh, we, one with my other friend, we went into ventured into the tech space, and this is before. uh by jews and all these people became big uh so although we officially got registered in 2018 but the idea was there since 2015 and we were trying to build an lms platform uh the venture did not take off being we were the complete, we were a completely remote team so we said uh we discontinued in 2019 and that's when fit hello started uh so from 2019 the journey has been really ex- uh, exciting today uh we are almost we say at least in north india we are the number one app for weight loss diet planning uh we are competing with big big ones like healthy fine and fitter already and we are giving them head on competition uh we are an ai enabled platform uh where we are trying to uh, help our clients move towards a healthy lifestyle step by step so uh, all of you are uh, students of software and you understand software more than i do uh, but what we are trying to do is we are trying to capture our uh, users lifestyle in data points uh, we know uh, where they lack we are building tools to identify from that data to identify where they are lacking and then uh, the kind of interventions whether it is a dietary intervention or an exercise or a mind concentration uh, through that data we know what kind of interventions to uh, plan for them then we are tracking their progress in data and over time the system is collecting all of this intelligence and uh, we are building a system that will be able to predict weight loss in near future we will be able to tell uh, when a new client joins and tells and shares their data with us uh, we can tell them with certain accuracy that based on our experience our uh, the data sets that we have we will be able to help you achieve this uh, amount of weight loss in this in these many months so that is what we are trying to build it is really exciting uh, uh, it is uh, totally data driven today it is uh, we are not there yet we Uh, we've built the uh, i will say we've laid the building blocks uh, and what has worked well for us is uh, we have a service line so the team is already 90 people today out of which 50 are coaches uh, serving clients and uh, they are bringing in the revenues to build this product so a little glimpse uh, we started as two people in 2019 today this is our office uh, and we are already looking at further expansion this office can uh, accommodate 200 people but we are already looking at options because the way the speed at which we are going we will know uh, next year we will need a new office so that has been the journey and i will say from 2019 to 2021 it's not the two years that has worked for us it's the uh, i will say 13 years that did not work for us and all that struggle and learning that went on and uh, we just did things right this time and it fell it and we were lucky as well so things just fell in place uh, why we chose an app why tech uh, of course uh, scalability it's it comes easy uh, there are a lot of margins you don't have to run after middle men and you don't have to feed them uh, it is extremely efficient and data driven so i have already shared that we are relying on a lot of data to uh, to predict outcomes so 
uh, with that i'll move to the next section the main one how to build a startup and uh, this is literally how we built fitello as well so i will say i will break it down in five steps one is to understand the first one is to understand who your customer is uh, then building an mvp the uh, minimum viable product uh, finding a way to talk to them but that is communicating with them always giving them quality uh, measuring what you are doing rinsing and then repeating to make it scalable so this is a simple five step process it looks simple there is a lot of uh, i will say with every step uh, there are things that go into it uh, and we will talk about it we will touch upon it it's a big subject but uh, this is how we've been able to build a startup and this is how uh, i ask uh, students who talk to me and that these are at least the five essential points in that order that we need to do to build any startup so the first one is who is your customer now this is the biggest one i said uh, we both of us both of us founders here we were obese most of our lives so we already knew the mind of the customer and that worked really well for us so uh, there are tons of literally there are tons of fitness startups out there the market is flooded every day there is a new app coming up there is a new fitness center opening up a new brand is launching a new product is being launched that says uh, they will they will do some magic overnight a new fad comes every week whether it's a keto diet or black water or what not so every day something new is happening and it's a very competitive space but people or i would say brands who really understand their customer are doing it better than others um, some needs will be obvious so a lot of times uh, for example if a client comes to us and says hey i need to lose weight so it is an obvious need but for some needs uh, uh, awareness is needed so uh, for example covid came and sadly covid was a wake up call that made people realize uh, how important internal not external not like uh, the biceps or six pack abs but how important in the internal health your immunity your gut health your uh, mental health how important they are so for, and for for those kind of needs uh, some sort of awareness is needed and that's why where brands go for advertisements and um, campaigns some uh, you have to identify so people will not even say but you have to identify it um, if you have heard of a brand called men's xp so what they've done is uh, they've identified that men's grooming is actually a big category and even though people uh, men uh, shy from saying uh, they need grooming so but they need that product what they did was uh, if you go to the men's xp website their hottest selling product is a bb cream now uh, if you do a little deep deep dive it's just really a lip gloss so what they've done is they've rebranded the entire thing they've understood that their customer wants it and just to make it more easy for them to uh, consume it they've they've come up with a new product and it's one of the hottest selling products so they've identified men's grooming is a big big segment even it's not uh uh not about just uh, hair creams and um uh, and uh, uh i would say things grooming things that were that used to be there earlier like a face wash or a hair cream people need specific solutions they are they are they're going after beard shampoos they're going after uh, specific creams and what not so uh, some needs have to be identified then the other big question is who makes the buying decision so uh, trends are changing thanks to jio and other big players 700 million uh, of us are online today and about 5 years back a lot of uh, online folks were just male today uh, there are as many female uh, online as there are males so uh, and they are they are making a lot of buying decisions today. so when it is for themselves for their families uh, so you have to understand who is the buying decision because that will help you to identify how to talk to them so if for a product if even if a product so the way baiju does it is for example even though they are selling 
courses for kids the buying decision is being made by parents and the kind of campaigns they do marketing campaigns or uh, sales pitches that they make they are targeting parents so you have to understand who is that uh, decision maker and then your messaging or marketing or even sales strategies should be targeting though uh, that that buying decision maker uh, so then uh, you have to solve a problem you care about uh, if it comes naturally to you you'll do it you'll you'll love it every day uh, it's been uh, two and a half years uh, i've been trying to build fit hello and uh, i don't remember if i have if i've ever taken a break uh, and a day off maybe uh, yes occasionally but uh, I, i used to love travel and uh, last in my corporate career i've traveled to like 15 countries and what not uh, but i've been so much into my work and i love it so much uh, i did not i've not felt that void uh, covid was also there but i've not felt the void to to see a new country to travel uh, so gen if you can uh, actually solve the problem that you care about uh, it will be long lasting uh, you if you identify a big gap in the market but you really don't care about the problem you'll you'll do it for some time you might be motivated by money or uh, identifying or finding something new but if you don't really care about the problem uh, you will not you will not do it you will not do it for long so and then that will show in your actions in uh, it will be there in your subconscious whether you admit it or not uh, you have to really care about the problem and uh, so for us for example if we were obese and a lot of our childhood was uh, around the memories of uh, not being able to uh, not being not being fit mentally so a lot of our uh, uh, childhood memories were around that and uh, we so sort of we understood the mind of our customers and we cared to uh, literally came when when a new client comes to us and, and they are obese we understand what they are going through more than physically mentally and and that is the kind of uh feeling that we have we generally care about this and that is why probably things are working out for us uh lastly you have to start with a niche you cannot be a generic brand you cannot i mean uh, today you cannot just start uh, you cannot create a new app that is doing what 10 others are doing that cannot just deliver products it has to be a niche it has to deliver products in 10 minutes it has to it has to start with something niche because uh, the customer is extremely educated today and they are looking for solutions that can solve their specific problems if you see new startups that are coming to today they are solving very unique problems and that is how you have to start otherwise you will be just competing there are so many brands out there you will be just be competing with other big players in the industry and the kind of marketing budgets they have you're not going to sustain we started with weight loss now we are slowly expanding into other categories but that is the one service we started with today till date about 80% of our revenues come from that one service weight loss diet consultation that's it the next is uh, building an mvp uh, honestly when we started uh, you'll not believe it maybe you'll laugh at it uh, we started our mvp was the first tool that we built Uh, or the i would say the first month that we had uh, we had like a budget of 20000 that's that's what we had to start and we started with on uh, maybe you laugh at it we started with giving guides on excel sheets and ppts slowly we thought okay uh, people are loving the service we started getting some money uh, then we uh, then we started venturing into tech you don't need crazy uh, budgets you need a crazy team for sure but a lot of tools uh, that are out there they are free uh, so we built a free website we built a free official email id uh, we were using a free crm a lot of tools for example uh, we were using free image editing uh, software if you look at this uh, you literally you can start for free uh, and there are tools out there there are communities out there Uh, that are doing this for good uh, they want for example canva they want you to experience their service and they're giving that service away for free for one 
for our first year, we did not have a Canva premium license. Uh, we, uh, our official email IDs are on Zoho and Zoho gives five official email IDs, business email IDs for free. Um, that WordPress gives you a website for free and the domain is very cheap. You can build your own website. So from your home, the beauty of the internet is uh, you can show whatever you want to show the world. Uh, you can you can become a brand. Uh, you can show that you are a brand without being actually having without actually having a big fancy office. So you can be sitting in a room in your home. Uh, but if you are using these little details, uh, you have an official email ID. You have a good looking website. Your communications are well. Your graphics are well. You are uh, the way your team talks is structured and planned. And uh, if you do these little things, you can start being or start looking like a company and honestly when you start becoming or looking like a brand even if it is a small brand uh, people feel they are interacting with a brand and not an individual and that helps in most cases in some cases people want to talk to an individual uh, when they want one-to-one -one sort of consultations but in most cases it helps when you are a brand and uh, they would want to talk to you then uh, obviously, moving on to the next one, uh, you have to talk to them. You have to position your product. Uh, we position our product as the easiest way to get fit. Uh, we've, again, uh, we've been uh, in the last 10 years, what happened to us was we tried every weight loss solution that is out there. Uh, we tried the gym, we tried diet plans, uh, we tried supplements, uh, we, uh, we tried some medicines. So you name, we tried all the, all the fat diets, the keto diet, the intermittent fasting diet, the GM diet, paleo diet, we tried everything, but it, nothing was sustaining. So we, when we stumble upon the actual solution, that is the, uh, the path to sustainable fitness and habit building and doing it slowly and uh, making sure it becomes a habit, we knew uh, we've cracked it. So we positioned our product as the easiest way to get fit. It was based on what our customers were feeling so we positioned our product like that. Um, we identified the channels. Once you have identified who your customers are, you will be able to identify channels. And talking to them is free. It is. It doesn't cost. So thanks to social media, it is free to them. So for example, a lot of our initial customers were female in the age group of 40 to 60. And uh, they they wanted diet plans and obviously we knew twitter is not for them imagine a 40 to 60 year old or 50 year old lady they she's not on twitter she's not on instagram she's she's on facebook and if you will start reading the uh, trends you'll know where your customers are and then you'll be able to identify those channels so today uh, there still are customers our facebook channel has about uh, about four lakh followers and we generate a lot of business from there then we ventured into this new space where we said, okay, we've identified a 20 year old female also needs a diet plan because of the hormonal disturbances going on in her body. And that's where we started venturing into Instagram. And now we're looking at YouTube. But in, uh, where a lot of people go wrong is saying, okay, I'll start with this channel and then see how it goes. It's the other way around. You have to identify where, who your customer is and then what the channel is. So if your customer is a 15 year old, maybe TikTok is the channel. If you, uh, if you are, I don't know, if your customer is on Snapchat, talk to them on Snapchat. So you have to identify what works for uh, your customers and then talk to them on those channels. So really spreading the word again, uh, uh, using your expertise. Uh, if you are a domain expert, this is an uh, example of content that we use on our channels. For example, the first one is uh, in this fitness space, there's a lot of uh, wrong things happening. So if you go to a gym, they'll say, eat egg white, throw away the egg yellow. We say egg yellow is the best multivitamin. Uh, people say, don't eat pizza, go for salad. And they're saying, you know what, a Caesar salad that you buy outside is dangerous. Uh, the third one is, there are a lot of diet products that are out there. And we tell them, go after traditional products, probably diet products are are just a fad. When you share this unique knowledge with them, content with them, when they start seeing you as an expert, they'll start engaging with you. And when they certain or when they identify that you are an expert, they will eventually buy services from you. 
So that is how you have to go about it. Uh, giving them quality every day. Uh, today, customer delight is everything. So uh, even as a little delay, uh, detail such as how the app opens up, how is it loading, how much time is it taking, how is the button looking, how is the uh, navigation happening. Uh, so all of that is changing. And uh, since we had little budget when we started, our app is still, we're still working on our app to make it better every day. It's still uh, not the quality we would want. Uh, we're still making it. So, and then now we have the budgets to make it, but uh, we have a whole team now working on the user experience on little details. Uh, there are so many details that go into uh, defining the user experience. So you can actually predict or with your app design, you can actually uh, softly push them in the direction you want. For example, if you want them to answer a certain question, uh, you can, and you must have seen a lot of things. For example, uh, when you visit a website and they want you to hit the next button, the next button will be blue. They will, if the back button, they don't want you to hit the back button, it will be gray or uh, less noticeable. And then there are other uh, principles, theories that are being used to ensure the users behave in the way you want them to behave. And every little details matter. Uh, even service have new standards. So if you are into service business, uh, startups are servicing clients in less than 24 hours. Gone are the days they, where they used to say, okay, we'll get, companies used to say, we'll get back in a week. Uh, we have a five to seven days resolution time today. It's like few hours. They want immediate answers. And uh, you have to get your hands dirty to actually know it. You, you cannot do it on textbook. You cannot do it in Excel sheets. You have to get your hands dirty. Um, when you, if you, if you want to develop an app, you have to start doing it. So you'll have to start the wireframing. You'll have to start uh, understanding the user flow, and you'll have to start getting into all of those details. You'll have to see what is happening. You'll have to take feedback, and then you'll know where what is the right way to do it. Uh, measure, rinse, and repeat. Last one. So yes, uh, there are a lot of data points, analytics available today. It is available on all platforms. Uh, in fact, there is so much data today. You have to know what you have to measure. Otherwise, you'll just be lost in the flood of data. So uh, you have to create your own funnels. Uh, so funnels, let me explain your funnel approach. When you start, uh, when you identify that this is how your customer will interact with you. So let us say you, you're, uh, you're active, you've identified Instagram is the thing where you, uh, the platform where you speak with your customers and then uh, you start talking to them and they start talking to you. So that is the first point of interaction to the point where they buy or purchase something from you. That is the entire funnel. So they come to your page, uh, uh, how much time it takes for them to convert to, to start talking to you. Are they, uh, what percentage of them are actually uh, talking more and getting the line to buy the plan and what percentage are actually buying the plan. So you have to create funnels. Someone comes on your website, what do they do? They ask you a query, then what? You send them something. You have to create that funnel uh, on and then see uh, what is pushing them to that purchase decision because ultimately, if you are trying to build a startup, you want to sell something, you want to, to make money, to have a profitable business. So you have to think about profit from day one. Uh, you have to think uh, when you acquire a new customer, how will they, uh, to what point you have to push them and what will those channels or levers be uh, till the time they make that purchase decision. And of course, you have to innovate and evolve every day because uh, analytics and uh, data available on these platforms will give you so much information. Sometimes you think the assumptions that you had were wrong and then uh, these platforms will be able to tell you on what should be the right strategy. Uh, other aspects, startup often requires capital. We, we did not believe in raising capital early on. Uh, we are still bootstrapped. And uh, there are many forms. Uh, it's not necessary to be bootstrapped always if you want to raise funds. There are many forms. Uh, there is friends and family. There is uh, there are these platforms for crowdfunding. Uh, you can look at a loan. Uh, you can find an investor. So there are many forms of funds available. But just remember, with every uh, uh, with every method, there is a positive and a negative. So the reason why we did not uh, go for uh, uh, why we decided to stay bootstrap was we thought we will start attracting 
customers first we will we will try to build an mvp without raising anything once we have a working mvp and we have a pro- proven product market fit when you have identified that our product is right for the market is when we will go after capital we did not want to dilute our equity early on and we did not want to have the burden of a loan or paying installments so uh, and we knew with little capital we will be able to do it uh, the next is i think uh, it's all about the team try to build a core team of complementing skill sets having the same vision uh, living the same dream uh, even if it is a four people team five people team two people team doesn't matter try to have four to five people in the core team because as you grow as you start there will be so many aspects to a startup that uh, if you are just one or two doing it uh, it eventually uh, the things that might not add value to the startup so everyone has a certain skill a certain skill set someone is good at something the other one is good at something so if if you are good at programming and if i tell you to handle finance you will just suck at it you will take a time a long probably a long time to learn things versus if you try to find uh, what is the kind of work uh, finance was needed in my startup can i uh, can i uh, how can i efficiently do it do i really need a co-founder can i outsource it how can i uh, manage it myself for now so you have to identify those answers there will be some things uh, which will you will not be able to outsource so uh, if you have to build the product if you have built it if you have to build the team uh, if you have to run operations those things uh, are difficult to outsource so you will have to rely on the core team and then uh, the culture that you build uh, will it culture is everything uh, if you can build a culture of uh one family uh, one group doing having fun together doing thing change, trying to change the world uh, if you are able to motivate people to join your culture uh, to join your vision uh, they will be taking the responsibility of your business these are some of some of the picks of uh, our uh, teams and uh, we are you will see having us having fun in office and even working on trips so that's how we are if there is work we will do it but we will also have fun because we want to have fun along the way final thoughts uh, be a winner in your mind uh, everyone can do it so there is there is no right time or uh, no right time to start i've seen founders starting at the age of 50 uh, failing for 10 times and starting at 50 seen founders getting successful at starting at 20 so there is no right time it's it's your time uh, if you think you can do it you actually you can do it so uh, just start doing it uh, always network and have the right people around what worked for us was i am a big time uh, i will say i'm i'm big on networking and i connect with a lot of people and i build good relationships with people i try to help wherever i can and in return i've been lucky to seek to get help as well so always network and have the right people around uh, because uh, as, as i was giving you a finance example so we faced this similar situation uh, luckily i had a friend a childhood friend who has a ca firm and who said for 6 months i'll support you at minimal price so uh, just because i had that network uh, that happened for me so uh, always network and be open minded and try to have the right people around they'll always push you to to do to be better versus if you send someone who's, in, who's a negative person in your life just try to stay away from them we don't honestly we don't have time for that uh, always keep learning my last uh, suggestion for you guys always always keep learning to date Uh, if you ask me what i've learned last week there are at least two or three things that i can share that i've learned last week itself always keep learning um, uh, in the last in my 13 co- years of corporate experience uh, i learned so much uh, every experience taught me uh, things i i learned coding i learned uh, how to read legal documents i learned uh, how to build financial models i learned uh, how to hire and do uh, appraisals uh, i learned uh, how to do digital marketing Uh, i learned uh, excel um, basic excel modeling so there are so many things that i learned that helped uh, nothing is uh, uh, there was a time i used to think hey what am i going to do uh, in my job in infosys i was supposed to read some legal documents contracts as well and i was thinking how will it add value to my life but when i was uh, uh, when we started fidelo and during the early days we did not have money uh, we wanted to onboard some vendors and there were contracts and i i reached out to a lawyer and he said he'll charge like Uh, 15000 for one contract validation and uh, it was a lot of money at that time uh, so i just 
just because I had that experience, I was a uh, basic. I was able to navigate it on a very high level, and uh, we were able to save that money. So every learning helps. Uh, so try to learn as much as possible. Uh, with that, I'll stop. Uh, that's it. Uh, I hope you have. Uh, I hope I was able to share. Uh, some interesting uh, insights, some insights, some tips for you guys. Um, in case uh, you have questions, you can drop it in the chat box. I can take it directly or uh, even if Ishan or Anmol, if someone is there, uh, you guys can share questions and I'll be happy, uh, I'll, be, I'll be happy to help. Yeah, so I definitely like to say that was quite a very insightful session and I myself got motivated at times and got a lot of uh, knowledge like how to start a startup and many ideas came uh, into my mind while I was listening to you continuously. So let's head on to questions and let's see what uh, our the folks have in their mind. So like Arjit is asking that what legal requirements are there for the specific type of an app? Like, yeah, that's a very nice question, I'd say, because we all have in mind that uh, we make an app and introduce it to the public. So what all things are there that the legal requirements are there that we should keep in uh, mind for building the app? So for an app, it depends. So for our, uh, for us, for example, uh, Ajit, we are servicing clients. And uh, when we onboard a client, we want them to agree to our terms and conditions. For example, uh, weight loss as a subject, we cannot guarantee weight loss. So if people come to us, hey, you said weight loss, but there is no weight loss. Uh, so it is a very subjective field. And uh, having those right uh, terms and conditions in place uh, is a is a legal requirement that we went through. Uh, for example, we often come across people, clients who have diabetes and other ailments. So uh, losing weight for them is difficult compared to people who don't have these diseases, right? So they cannot say, hey, I want my money back. So um, having those money back guarantees or being clear on day one that there is no money back guarantee and uh, you are paying for the services that you are taking, not for the results. So uh, every, I will say every app will have different sort of requirements. So maybe if you are building an app that is uh, that has uh, a, a Dream 11 kind of app where people are playing or gaming and a sort of betting maybe, maybe that will have much more legal requirements. So it, it depends on what sector you are in and what you are trying to build. Maybe you'll have to consult uh, you'll have to consult some expert on what these requirements can be. Yeah, Arjit. So I guess uh, uh, your question has been answered. And uh, let's see what is the next question. So next question is from uh, Anmol uh, itself. That how to know that the idea we are thinking is perfect for a startup. No, nothing is perfect. So when we entered into this segment, there was already, uh, I will say, as I said, every day a new product is being launched that can promise weight loss, a new medicine is coming, a new method is coming. Uh, so uh, nothing is perfect. It, it was a flooded market, but we just identified a way to do it better. We knew we can do it better. That's it. And there were numbers to support obesity is increasing. Uh, diabetes is increasing, uh, more people are falling sick, they need diet plans, people are spending more money on uh, health services. So there were all these indicators, but we really identified that we can do it better than a lot of others. So we entered a very competitive market and uh, today uh, we are the best. If you Google uh, top dietitians in India, three of them are in Chandigarh from where we are. And we started from there. Today we are already competing with them and beating at least two of them. Yeah, that's a very uh, good achievement. And uh, with this, I'd also like to add a question of my own that it happens many times that like we have an idea in our mind and uh, we see that there are already very successful companies already doing the same thing, like not the same thing, but yeah, kind of same thing or providing some kind of service that is similar to the idea which we have in our mind. So how do you get a motivation like in uh, uh, like we will build this thing and we will start this startup and we will take it to the heights the company has already uh, there in the market. So how do we get the motivation? Vishan, I think that, that's a simple one. So if you've seen companies already doing it, uh, have you 
have you come across something that is wrong with that no no it's uh, that you know so that is not have you for example so you you get your answer if you found a better way to do it a cheaper way to do it right so there yeah, must yeah. be some starting point what why do you want to do it just because 10 others are doing it is not a good enough answer why do you want to do it yeah, right? yeah do you care true. about it more than anyone else right do you have you do you understand the customers of that space more than the current uh, players are understanding or do you have some new insights to offer do you have some new tools to offer so there will be a reason why you want to do it okay cool cool that's uh, uh, that's completely a thing that for motivation so let's move on to our next question and uh, uh, so the hanit is asking the question that how can we explore ideas for a startup and how can we know if the startup will work okay um anit i will say the entire world is online today so there are communities uh, there are networking events that are happening uh, every week uh, you can join online communities you can start attending events uh, there are startup groups for example in chandigarh we are from chandigarh i have joined at least 10 groups here those are whatsapp groups and uh, some of them meet as well so you have to really start getting into those circles circles so networking will come in handy here if you are in those circles you will know what is happening what others are doing and you will start getting access to online resources on uh, what people are talking about honestly i think it's all out there uh, we are just we just not seeing it there is so much information out there uh, this group of people is already talking on twitter about different ideas but we are we just don't know it right so once you are in those groups in those circles you start joining those conversations and then you know uh, this is where we will get new ideas from yeah yeah that's completely i agree with you on this and uh, so i see if any one of you has any more questions or is there any question left out in the chats so definitely ask it right now because it's that's really a once in a lifetime opportunity to interact with such a person and like if you really want to explore what is fitello and what are uh, what means what services does it provide so you can explore fitello links are in the description and also the so, uh, social uh, platform links for uh, sail bansal sir is also in the description and uh, i definitely would like to see if any one of you wants to ask any questions ahead go ahead and ask it right now and clear your doubts so let me wind up the session by asking uh, like uh, one question from my side that yeah uh, many times it happens we start a startup we are going good with it but sometimes in uh, the middle we face some difficulties like sponsorship or like money issues so what would you recommend that how to like get a sponsorship for our service or application basically so again um, if you believe your startup really has value and it can disrupt the, the space you are in it can change it can it is doing something innovative and you need to spend more money in it before it start it starts to give returns there is honestly uh, the startup ecosystem in india is changing very fast there is i will say there is fomo in investors also they want to invest and multiply their money as well so if you have that idea you will find an investor yeah yeah for sure so that thanks a lot for uh, like uh, guiding all of us and uh, arjit has a question in his mind that which app platform should i target first uh again customer centric question we started without a platform i said we as our first dives were going out as pdf documents on whatsapp because we did not have the money and now uh, if you see the trends uh, for example if you say my customer is in chennai and then uh, they use uh, these kind of smartphones for example uh, android is more uh, is used more there or, uh, or maybe iphone is used there more whatever i will say if you can go for both the platforms simultaneously if you cannot try to identify where your customers are and then But eventually, you will have to go to both platforms. Okay, okay. Uh, I hope Arjit, your doubt uh, got cleared uh, with the answer. And 
so i guess i'd like to wind up the session i see no more questions coming in and uh, i really thank you uh, sail sir for joining us and guiding us and clearing all our doubts really uh, this was a very, very insightful session and i got all my uh, doubts cleared not only me i guess my uh, or fellow audience also got the uh, doubts cleared and i really thank you again for joining the session and all of you who also joined us and uh, made the session interactive thank you to you also and uh, uh, hope uh you also felt nice sir uh, to join the wow. stream thank you so much yeah. thanks and all the best everyone yeah have a nice day sir thank you